two-in-one devices can do a lot. When our software makes use of these capabilities, we have to keep in mind that people need to be in control over what they will or won't allow our software to do on their behalf. Enter app permissions. Whatever device we're dealing with, whether it's mobile or a two-in-one, we've got a lot of opportunity. That is, we've got cameras to access, location detection, microphones, the motion of the device, and more. When our applications use one of these features, usually the process goes something like this. Here's our device. We need access to location. Can we use it, please? Yes or no? If someone says yes, everything's great. If they say no, we may have problems. Once permission is refused at a system level, it's really, really hard to get it back. So we need to be very mindful about how we ask for permission. Let's look at the mobile world to see some things we can learn. Asking right up front, that is, right when the application fires up, can we use your current location? It doesn't have a very good return rate. That is, 40% of people at most will say, OK. We've lost 60% of people, and getting them back, as I mentioned before, is very hard. Instead of just asking for permission without explaining why, we can actually let people know what they're going to get when they do give us permission. So here in this photo journaling app, remember where you've been. Keep track of your travel and your adventures in life. In order to do that, we're actually going to need to capture your location. If you tap Grant Location Permission, then the dialog shows up. In the Heyday application, this approach gives them a 95% acceptance rate on location permissions. People know why they're being asked, and they understand the benefits, so they're much more likely to actually accept. In another application, Cluster, this approach didn't have nearly as much acceptance. They found it was about 40 to 66% effective, better than the upfront approach, but still not as good as it could be. So they tried a different technique, the double dialogue. Here, when you create your first album on Cluster, you get presented with an application dialog that says, can we access your photos? This is a decoy. It's not really the system level permissions. They're just gauging whether you'll say no or not. If you say no, they'll try again later. But if you say yes, then they actually bring up the real system control that allows you to get access to those photos. Of the people that say yes and make it to this dialogue, 97% of them provide real permission access. By the time we get to here, though, only 67% of people total grant permission. And we can do better than that. The next technique Cluster tried was in context. That is, when you're actually willing to post a photo and tap the camera icon, and choose Photos, then the system level dialog shows up. Here, because of the intent to post a photo, 89% of people total will grant system level permissions. Compare that to the 67% we got before. In context is a very powerful technique. Another example for cluster shows it when you're searching for people. Here, when I look for Ginger and no results come back, there's a link that allows me to show results from my iPhone contacts. When I choose that option, up pops the system level control asking for access to my contacts. Here, because people know and understand why they're being asked, there's a 100% permission acceptance rate. That's what we want. Asking for app permissions is sensitive business. Upfront asks without any context or explanation don't do very well. And when people say no, we're in a world of hurt. Trying to get them back is very painful. Instead, Ask when it's appropriate or explain yourself before asking. This gives people the context they actually need to give you the permissions that your application desires. 